Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Bubblegum Reviews. My name is Steve and today I'll be reviewing Leatherheads with George Clooney, Renee Zellweger, John Krasinski, and Jonathan Price. So this is a first time watch for me. A um, little quick summary is George Clooney is the captain of a football team. Their football team sucks, so he's trying to do whatever he can to help his team. And he recruits John Krasinski, who's a war hero as well. Well, they end up both running into uh, Renee Zellweger, who's a pretty high up reporter. Uh, reporter. We'll just go with the reporter. Uh, she is all friendly and everything, but she's really trying to cover or uh, uncover some dirt on John Krasinski. And in the meantime, George Clooney and Krasinski are both kind of fighting over her for who gets her. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, right, let's get right into this. So, first and foremost, this movie I am half in, half out on. So, there's some parts that I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. But there's also some boring, the love story I didn't care for, it really bored me. And there's just parts in this that the writing kind of gets lackey, and I'm just like... It probably took me 45 minutes to finally get into this where I was like, really? Wait, what happens? What's next? What's going on? What? What? Uh-huh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, George Clooney is the director in this, which he hasn't directed much, but I, I, I want to kind of give him props for this because, I mean, George Clooney is not a big director, so... This is, might have been one of his little passion projects. It wasn't a terrible film. Renee Zellweger was my favorite part of this movie. She really was. She her, her little snappy comebacks to the guys talking to her, and she just come back with something real quick, and it was really good. I liked her role in this. Uh, there's a few people from Oh Brother Art Thou that it looks like George Clooney might have brought over for this. Uh, one of them being Stephen Root. He's the one of the radio announcers in the box. And then there's the coach, George Clooney's coach on the football team. And I think there's one other guy. I just am not sure. He was on the train. I don't know. It might not be, but I thought it was. Anyways. So, the music in this is really enjoyable. I love the big band style music that Randy Newman cues up for this. It was really, uh, really, per I mean, it was perfect for this. This is a 1920s film. You got the old timey stuff. The uniforms in this were really good. The, this was filmed in North Carolina, uh, which I was stationed when I was in the military. I was stationed in fort jackson south carolina and personally to me where i was in south carolina kind of looked like this where it's filmed in north carolina obviously not the whole the whole building structures and everything because i mean that's that's long gone but i'm talking about just like the scenery that you see for what you do see but anyways uh my favorite part in this would probably have to be the ending, the final game. That part, they did a really good job. It just gave it a good feel at the end of it for the movie. Like I said, there's parts of this that aren't great, but overall, this is not a terrible movie. It is enjoyable. I I, I was trying. I really was. And I, I did enjoy some of the stuff, so... Let's see here. Director, we have George Clooney. Like I said, he's also done the directing of Monuments Men. He's been in No Brother Art Thou, Men Who Stare at Goats, uh, Syriana. He's been in, I mean, it's George Clooney. He's, this guy's been in tons of stuff. IMDB gave this a six point, six, no point, six out of ten. Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 52%. I gave it a five out of ten. Half in, half out. Things I like, or reasons you should watch this. 
probably the music, the 1920s style, and Renee Zellweger. And I, I'm George Clooney wasn't bad. I actually he wasn't bad at all. George Clooney was pretty enjoyable. Like there was times that he made me laugh. The person I didn't care for was John Krasinski. I felt like he was uninterested in his role or he just was uninterested and just didn't seem like he wanted to be there. I didn't care for his role in this. Box office of 41.3 million on a budget of 58 million. So it may it is in the negative 16.7 mil. Ouchy wobble, but I'm actually surprised it made 41.3 million. I said mu music is by Randy Newman, who's also done all the Toy Story movies. He's done A Bug's Life. He's done Parenthood. He has done Michael. And that's just the start of this guy's list. I've seen all those, by the way. And they're all good. Parenthood's great. Michael. I know you're probably like, what in the hell are you watching Michael for? I saw it at a young age. I think my mom rented it, and I ended up, we were watching it as a family, and I was just like, this actually wasn't bad. It's an angel who smokes cigarettes. Like, it's kind of entertaining. Uh, anyway, so my interesting fact, over 400 local people were used as extras in this. They were Their pay was around $9 an hour. So I looked it up, and this movie was filmed around 06, 07 time. I think 07. So the pay in North Carolina that I could find dating back was 2009, and the pay at that time was 6 15 for minimum wage. So my guess, if you go back two more years, it's probably like 5 50 ish So in a way, they were getting $9. If it was 9 that's a, like a $3 raise. Like, that's pretty cool. To be a freaking extra, I'd be like, sign me up. I'll do it. I mean, the movie, I wouldn't even care what movie it was. If it, George Clooney. Uh, I, I, so... A little quick summary. We actually got a phone call one time. Uh, we could we could have been extras in the Matrix. I think Reloaded. We literally my mom turned it down. I'll never forget this. We they literally called us asking for extras, and we we turned down to be extra uh, extra in the Matrix Reloaded. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Wow. That, those were crazy times. Clearly. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so that's all for today. Up next, up next, I got a, cho a choice here between three. We got Hatfield and the McCoys. This is a little mini series. See Bill Paxton and Kevin Costner. Dark Star. This is a movie my buddy told me I need to watch. That's uh, directed by, I believe, uh, no, written by Dan O'Bannon. And uh, I think, let's see. No, it's not. It's uh, John Carpenter does the music and the story and screenplay. So John Carpenter's involved as well. I do like him. He's uh, They Live. And then there's The Man. I've seen this a few times. This is actually a pretty damn funny movie. So one of those three will be what's up next. Most likely it'll be one of the movies. I don't know if I'm ready to start the, the little TV mini show yet, but... Uh, yeah, that's all for today. You guys have a good day and like and subscribe. I will see you guys next time.